Netanyahu speaking out very passionately, rejecting those calls uh, for a ceasefire, essentially saying this is a war and they won't stop until they've met that objective of getting rid of Hamas. Where are you on this, Kelvin? Well, I agree, I agree with Netanyahu's spokesperson who was just on. Just Of course you do. Of course you do. Of course, Kelvin McKenzie agrees with Netanyahu. Just ahead of this show starting, in which what they were saying was we are no longer going to suffer the tyranny of these terrorists coming across our border and killing our people. We're going to... Yeah, true. We're just going to keep the tyranny of people evicting people from their homes in the West Bank and engaging in human rights abuses and settler expansion whilst violating international law like they've been doing so for decades, right? That's fine tyranny. That's absolutely fine tyranny, right? But the material conditions that will lead to people being allowed to get radicalised in the position where Hamas do the, the atrocities that they engaged in, we're just going to ignore the materiality behind that. And then just imagine that the entire conflict started on the 7th of October. Wipe them out once and for all, and we are going to live in peace. And the people of Gaza, actually, will no longer live under the tyranny of Hamas. Or if they've embraced it... Except they won't live in peace. They won't live in peace because they will continue their expansionist ideology and expansionist policy in places like the West Bank as well. And do you think they'll stop the blockade once Hamas goes? Do you think that they will let Gaza have its own air territory, its own population registry? I wonder. They've done nothing about it this last 17 years, to be honest. Uh, perhaps they enjoy actually living alongside terrorism and, and actually want what Hamas wants, which is a one-state solution, i.e. Palestinians. They want to drive the Jews out of the Middle East, out of their homeland. And not even George Habash from the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine thought that that was what the one state solution meant. Now, I know that Hamas means that, but not even like the secular groups think that. They want a secular, singular state within the territory of Palestine or the, the, the area of Palestine, right? Incorporating Israel proper and Palestine into a single secular democracy. And then he's just saying, well, maybe Palestinians, maybe the people in the Gaza Strip just want that, even though essentially... 75% of these people never voted for Hamas because they were never old enough to be able to do so. They've lived there their entire life, essentially under military blockade, with a government that's completely unelected at this point, 17 years ago, where basically none of the people who elected them are still alive at this point. A very small population are still alive at this point. And they're essentially ruling as like a military dictatorship currently. But of course, Kelvin can just happily, can happily just entirely smear 2.2 million people in Gaza and just say, well, you guys, you guys, I can only assume you support Hamas. Therefore, anything that the Israeli state does to you is now completely justified. And, let, and once we find that out, then they can carry on pushing their way through Gaza, which I'm very pleased to see. And where are you on it, Michael? So I think there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, you talked about Netanyahu's war aims. Now, I think there's actually a bit of a misunderstanding about what they are. I think lots of people, Keir Starmer today, seem to be suggesting that what they want to do is, with precision strikes, take out a terrorist organisation and then sort of allow some different regime to, to take over. So just now, press pause. Do you agree that Hamas is uh, a terrorist organisation? Because I saw you the other day on Jake. Do you condemn Hamas? Please condemn Hamas, Michael. How can we continue this discussion until you've condemned Hamas? Please do it right now, Michael. Otherwise, this discussion is over. I know you wanted to make some kind of intelligent point about the material reality of what people are engaging in, what the actual war effort entails as far as the Netanyahu administration is concerned, right? Because if you'll notice, Kelvin McKenzie just said a bunch of platitudes. So let's wipe out evil Hamas. They're all terrorists, right? You know, whatever. And Michael comes in, okay, let's have a rational discussion about the military tactics that are being employed here. And she immediately cuts him off, having not cut off Kelvin McKenzie to go, bah, 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 bah. but do you condemn Hamas? Please condemn Hamas right now. Jacob Reese Mogg's programme, and you conceded that uh, Hamas had committed a terrorist act. But then, as I understood it, as I interpreted what you were saying, you stopped short of saying that you regard them as a terrorist organisation. Yeah, so I think we need to be historical about what Hamas is and how they got to the position they are. Because they're not like Al Qaeda, they're this sort of small sect group who wants to commit global um, sort of terrorism and a sort of Islamic revolution. Hamas uh, came into power in Gaza partly as a result of Netanyahu, so the president or the prime minister sorry, of Israel, being quite keen 
to strengthen them. And the reason he wanted to do that is because he has always been against a peace process. So everyone in this country says we want a two-state solution. Netanyahu doesn't. Hamas don't either, but Netanyahu doesn't. Mm. Um, there was one faction in the Palestinian movement. That's, that's not true, by the way. He doesn't, he doesn't want it under the circumstances of having a okay. gun put his head. No, he doesn't want it at all. He wants the entirety of Israel to be encompassed the whole of the area that currently is Israel and Palestine, right? It's very clear from the ideology that he said about like places like Judea and Samaria. Like, that's, his, that's his whole ideology, or the whole point of like the far right that we currently have in power in the Israeli Knesset, is that they want to be able to have all of the territory of that area, right? They want all of Zone C to them is just Israeli territory at this point. It's not disputed territory, right? It's just Israeli territory to these people. They continually expand. It's obvious to everybody that they will, on threats of violence, ensure that they try and gain as much territory as possible. And that has been their policy ever since their inception, really and truly. And so, of course, it's within his material interests to strengthen Hamas, to try and disrupt the peace process, create a level of disunity within the Palestinian territories, so that there is further justification for the settlement expansion while people are busy discussing everything else. He's been, what was the quote, where it was something like, the key to disrupting the Palestinian Authority is by strengthening Hamas. He's, he's literally said that. And also the Amalek quote, as my revenge points out in chat as well. I think By a terrorist. Right. So Fatah, who are the organisation who renounced violence, they said, we're going to go into a peace process with the Israeli government. It was the Labour government at the time. Um, that fell through. Um, what Netanyahu has wanted to do ever since is say, we want Hamas to be the opposition not Fatah, because so long as Fatah are the opposition, we have to engage in a peace process. He doesn't want to engage in a peace process, so he has literally told his cabinet that if we want to have the kind of greater Israel that we want, which we want, which means Israel, including the West Bank and including Gaza, what we've got to do is strengthen the opposition who will block a peace process. Mm. And so I think we're in danger of giving him what he wants if we say, well, you've created this organisation, you've bolstered this government, and now you get to say to the world, oh, they're like ISIS, so I have to bomb to smithereens too. But that's a fascinating people. history lesson, but it doesn't answer... Because at least, you know, at least uh, ISIS just sprang out of the power vacuum that was left of, out of Western interventionism, right? At least we can't be blamed for giving money to Hamas, so to ISIS, rather. Whereas Hamas literally were, had, had help having money funneled from Qatar to them by Likud and the Netanyahu regime. But it's, but it's not true either. In, in it, it just, that, Mike was just making it up. Hamas had no intention, have never shown any intention of a two, two state solution. Okay. Where he, but that's literally what Michael just said. He just said that neither Netanyahu or Hamas care about a two state solution. I mean, maybe Kelvin's brain and ears aren't working well in his old age potentially at this point, but that's literally the exact, the exact point that Michael was making. If you both believe in a one-state solution that involves uh, essentially ethnically cleansing the other side of this ethnic um, conflict, that they both believe that it is rather than a territorial one, then you must therefore bolster each other to then create the war, create the, the animosity and the conflict that would be necessary to provoke the other into engaging in acts that would then justify further violence between them so that you can then make those territorial gains, right? Whereas the PLO, the PLO have and want one today, and I am certain that's, that the outcome of this today, uh, Michael, the outcome of this today, this terrible battle that's going on right now as... as we also, just, just as an aside, I just want to make it incredibly clear, right, that one state solution does not mean an ethnically homogenous greater Israel, greater Palestine area, right? As I mentioned earlier on, George Habash from the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, his version, right, of the one state solution is a secular state with equal status for each ethnic group, right? I'm not saying that I agree with that, or that I think that the PF, uh, PFLP are uh, an organisation that should be supported. Um, they are de designated a terrorist organisation within the European Union, and I agree with that assessment of them, given like the Dawson Field hijackings, for example. Right? I'm just stating this as this con as a, a counter argument to this conception that people have that somehow one state solution automatically means some kind of ethnic cleansing, whether being done by Israel or being done by the Palestinians.
We opine on it, not that anybody gives a stuff about what the UK thinks, as we opine on it, actually will be a, a two-state solution is more likely than ever before. I need to, I need to drill down on this. Okay. I need to get clarity in my head, and I think my viewers would appreciate the clarity as well. That is um, interesting history. We can debate, you know, whatever perspectives on it. But in the here and now, in the UK, Hamas is prescribed, as you know, in its entirety as a terrorist organisation. And do you share that description? Only if we apply the same term to the Israeli government. And I want to explain myself when I say that, because I know that will be controversial to lots it of your viewers. It will really be. I know it will be controversial to lots That's of your viewers. That's a shocking, thing, shocking myself. thing to say, so, Michael. I, you know, literally, exactly true, right? I hate to be a dictionary Andy, right? But let, let's draw up the dictionary definition of terrorism, shall we? Threats of violent action for political purposes. Simple as that. What do you think settler violence and expansion in the West Bank is being done with the express permission of the State of Israel? What is that if not violent action for political purposes? The political purpose is annexation of further territory in the West Bank and the violent action is what they're engaging in. They're literally engaging in terrorism in the West Bank. It's as simple as that. I spoke to someone last Friday who lost 20 of his family members, 20 of his family members in an airstrike. Now, they weren't militants, they weren't member of any political party. They'd actually lived south of the part of, of, of Gaza, which Israel has told people to evacuate. And he lost his father, three brothers, two sisters, and all of their children, right? Now, uh, that man, as you can imagine, is completely traumatized. In the West Bank, where Hamas aren't even in power, what we're seeing at the moment is settlers rounding up Palestinians, filming them, uploading, torturing them, what also happens in the West Bank is you how have... Do you mean to, how do you mean torturing? torturing? So tying them up, stripping them naked, and then humiliating them on camera. So most people would recognise that to be torture. Right. Where did you see that? Uh, on the internet today, verified. OK? Who, ver who, ver we, who verified we, that? We, uh, yesterday on Channel 4 News, you might have watched it. Yesterday on I Channel didn't 4 News. It. I didn't watch to, Channel 4 News. They spoke to a family who lived in the West Bank. Who... You love how I was just like, no, you, you mustn't. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it unless you've got a credible source. Oh, 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 you do have a credible source. Oh, well, I don't watch Channel 4 News anyway. Do with me. Well, there you go, mate. Again, these people, there's so many people who've just been completely insulated from the actions of what the state of Israel engages in. Because a lot of the Western narrative up until this point has been incredibly sanitised. Like, at the point where we're seeing, like, really pro-Israeli figures in, like, the United States right calling out Israel for the things they're engaging in, people looking at their Twitter feeds and seeing the remains of bombed refugee camps... There, there's people's perceptions have been changed somewhat. People's perceptions have been of the of the whole issue have been changed because when you look at like the like the Hasbara narrative around Israel, they always try and focus on just how similar to the Europeans and the Americans uh, the citizens of the state of Israel are. And I think that's true. I think they are quite similar. But it's used as a way of trying to paint themselves as being the good guys in an incredibly reductive form when being shown to American and to European audiences, right? We look like you, therefore we must be the good guys. We act like you, therefore we must be the good guys, right? When we actually look at the reality of what's been happening, what's been going on, the things that the State of Israel engages in, right? It's obvious that the things that they are doing are in massively in violation of international law, uh, complete contraventions as such, as what Michael has just talked about there, as well as what they've engaged in during the war and up until including the war uh, for the last 75 years. They've continually violated international law for a very, very long time. And people are now just getting their first glimpse of it, their first glimpse of the, the, the kind of things that the state of Israel, that the government of Israel does. You described how they have settlers, so Israeli settlers, knock on their door and tell them that unless you leave your own home, we will kill you. Unless you leave your own home, we will kill you. And then what they do is they cut off their electricity, cut off their water supplies. So what I mean to say by giving this explanation, is there... Well, speaking of water supplies, another violation of international law, like cementing up their water systems in the West Bank as well, like literally cutting people out of water. They've done that too. They can literally watch the videos of the cement trucks pouring them into the watering holes. Extremists on both sides. There are very violent people on but both I'm sides. I'm asking, you, and that, by I'm calling, asking uh, you, Michael, a specific question. And what you're doing, it will be very offensive to people. You're not answering my question. I've asked you, 
Well, that's strange, isn't it? That's very strange, isn't it? I thought the right wing hated when people used, oh, well, that's offensive as a way of denying the truth or denying somebody's argument, right? I don't care if it's offensive. Free speech, mate. Free speech. Facts don't care about your feelings. Do you want a safe space? Are you triggered? Do you uh, agree with the description that Hamas are terrorists? And what you're telling me is a whataboutery. You're telling me you're describing no, things on the other side of the coin. I'm not, I'll come to the other side of the coin in a minute. I'm asking you, the government in this country described Hamas as a terrorist organisation. A huge amount of people will absolutely categorically agree with that definition. Are you one of them? No. And the reason I say that is, well, no, so unless we also think... call the Israeli government a right. terrorist government, because by calling one side terrorists and the other right. side a legitimate state, right. what we are doing is putting well, what, our weight what, what, on the scales. Right. So, so, chill, so, chill. Hang on, so we got there in the end. So you don't regard Hamas. Although I do think that was an act. No, I, I think Michael's done the wrong answer here. I think he, he should just have said, yes, I believe that they are terrorists, because I also believe that Israel are terrorists, right? that they've both engaged in war crimes, both violated international law, and they both engage in violence for political ends specifically, right? They instigate violence for political ends, right? It's not like a reaction. It is outwardly instigated political violence that they engage in. I think that's, how, that's the kind of position that you need to be able to define them as terrorists. And I think that you lose the audience once you say no as your first answer, and you say, yes, I believe so, because the definition of terrorism applies to both Hamas and Israel. Right? You can't call Hamas terrorists without calling Israel terrorists because that's just how the definition works. Organization. Right, but you don't regard Hamas as a terrorist organization. Um, not unless we also describe right. the Netanyahu why government as a terrorist yes organization. No. Why are we doing this? What about? Well, because I don't really care. I don't care if we call them a terrorist organization or not. What I care about is how we define them relative to the other side in the conflict. Right. What I think is very important but is... The other side, the of whole, course, is a, is, a a Demo standard. is a democratic country that has been forced into this war because a collection of... Forced into this war. Yeah, mate. Pull the other one. It's got bells on, right? It's got bells on. Nobody asked them. In, nobody asked people in Gaza, would you like a blockade, right? Would you like to have your territory annexed? Would you like to be under occupation, right? Maybe if you didn't want there to be retaliatory violence to occupation, you wouldn't be doing the occupying in the first place, right? That doesn't make it justifiable when people engage in terrorism against civilians, right? The only way you can justify violence that's committed by um, an occupied area against their occupier is when you attack military targets, right? That'd be completely legitimate under international law because they are occupied and so you can attack military targets. We can't attack civilians, right? You know, but obviously both sides are attacking civilians and now at this point, so it's pretty moot, honestly. It's not justified, but what it does show is, you know, th it's hardly something that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And also you say, well, no, they didn't ask for this war. Benjamin Netanyahu was the one who was helping funnel money into Hamas so they could finance this war in the first place. And again, I, my heart weeps for the population of Israel who've been failed by their government, failed by the people who they trust to keep their national security, failed miserably by somebody who should be taking the first role and responsibility of their government is keeping the citizens safe. And they have failed by deliberately being as antagonistic and by instigating violence and by creating the further animosity and exacerbating animosity through the foreign policy that they've engaged in in search of ideological ends of further occupation of territory. Netanyahu is, they blame him for it as well. They blame Netanyahu for this too. In the population of Israel, they blame him and they're right to blame him. Vile, vile people have decided, I tell you what we do, we'll go over, the, we'll go over that uh, borderline there and we'll simply wipe out anybody, children, parents, grandparents, we seize a load of hostages and we'll kick off we will kick off what is now happening, right? So it's not as though the Israelis said one day, I tell you what, we'll go into Gaza. They didn't say that at all. They, they in fact... We'll look at Operation Cast Lead for a second, shall we? It's clearly not what's happened here. Clearly what's happened here is that they have responded to the attacks from Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, right? This is clearly a response, but... There's been plenty of times where Israel's been the instigator for incursions into the Gaza Strip, Kelvin. 
But then again, of course, we know that he has no idea how history works, so... Have ...facilitated the aid going through those uh, to, uh, to Gaza every day now for literally how long? How long is it? 17 years or however long it's been. The truth is that is Israel would love to have a two-state solution. These people I mean, do... The people of Israel would, right? I don't disagree that the people of Israel would want a two-state solution, try and ensure some level of peace. Does Netanyahu? Does Ben Gvir? Right? Does Smotrich? No, they do not want a two-state solution. They want a single-state solution, and it involves ethnic cleansing to get there. Right? They will put their ideological goals of ethnic cleansing above the safety of their own population. These politicians, right? Because I'm, I'm one hundred percent sure that the people of Israel would love a two-state solution. They would love to just have to forget about the whole conflict, but the the government keeps not doing that. Maybe, right? Maybe stop voting for Netanyahu. Just, just, just a, just a, a bit of advice from me to you. I mean, even then, he only gets like twenty-five percent of the vote or something. Do not want a two-state solution. But, you know that, Michael. Well, I don't well, even I've know why that. there's any argument said, about it. I mean, even the PLO hate the Hamas, for God's sake. You weren't listening. So what I said in my introduction. Yeah, I know most that of that was Hamas, cobblers, by the Hamas, way. I think you just okay, sit well, there and make it up. Okay, so Hamas. Don't want to. See, this is this is the, the level of debate that you get on GB News. Here's Michael Walker. Here's like a long, detailed history of how we've gotten to this place. And Kelvin goes, oh, I don't believe you. have just made it up. Yeah, I, oh, this impress regulated broadcaster, right? Novara Media, that is, regulated by impress. I'm sure that there is plenty of broadcasting code that GB News have to abide by that would prevent Michael from just making stuff up about foreign leaders, for example two-state solution. Fatah do want a two-state mm -hmm. solution. And the argument I'm making, which is made in Haaretz, an Israeli newspaper, which Netanyahu has made to his own cabinet, is to say that he prefers Hamas as his opposition than Fatah as his opposition, because he doesn't want a two-state solution. He wants an opponent who takes up arms because then he thinks that he is, can That win. is absolute well, nonsense. And by the way, it couldn't possibly get elected on a consistent basis in Israel if he was saying we'll have one rather than the other. Please just learn how proportional representation works, Calvin. Please just understand how this policy works, how this electoral system works. Like, yeah, he only gets 25% out of the vote. Definitely getting lower than that next time, right? You look at the polling, I think he stands like 15%, less than 15% in some areas. And the the kind of the the party that's going to likely take power afterwards is the National Unity Party, Benny Gantz, who's a little bit less hawkish than than Netanyahu is, but his poll ratings have tanked. I mean, they certainly won't vote him in again after this. That's for sure. That's for sure. But even then, only a, a small proportion of the population actually vote for Likud when it comes to the elections. And that's only 25% of the ones who actually turned out at the last election, which is a ton of about 70%, if I remember correctly. That. It is ridiculous. What, 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 the people the of Israel, who I know very well, the people of Israel would do anything today, yesterday, and really for the last, I don't know, 75 years to know that they had secure borders. And the trouble is that you are now an apologist for really the sh most shocking crime that even even people who come from the left like you would even well, agree. Not, I, I think what happened on the 7th of October was, was horrendous. I think oh, killing civilians is horrendous. Oh, okay, right? I think targeting right. and killing civilians is horrendous when both sides do it. And I also think the description you've given there is mistaken in a very important way. Because and do you what see what I mean, right? We have rational arguments coming from Michael and then from Kelvin. You just have, oh, I can't believe you'd want to be a terrorist synthesizer. That's it. They have nothing. They have no facts. They have nothing. I've I've stood next to some Israelis, and they say they want some secure borders. I'm like, we're not disputing what the population want. We are looking at the actual history of the policies that Netanyahu has given his has put his name to, that's gotten us to this point. Right? That doesn't necessarily reflect the will of the population. Do you think the whole of this population wanted Boris Johnson to use the pandemic to try and kill off old people? which apparently he now did, which we'll get onto further on in the stream today, right? saying that old people should accept their fate so that young people can carry on. Do you think people voted for this? No, of course they didn't, right? I mean, even only 40% of the electorate, even vote, or the, the toe turned out for the election, vote for Boris Johnson, and he had a de facto power to do whatever he wanted, right?
The idea that just because Netanyahu is the Prime Minister of Israel, it means that every single person in Israel therefore must agree with what he says and does. It's just, that's just a complete misreading and understanding of how representative democracy works, right? What is often discussed in the Western press is as if this conflict started on the 7th of October with those awful, awful attacks, right? And this conflict didn't start on the 7th of October. As you say, for the last 17 years, Gaza has been under siege. Now, Israel will say, oh, we're providing them with, with some water and some food. But they're also stopping any imports coming in. So Gaza cannot build up any kind of independent economy. In the West Bank, which is run by Fatah, who you're agreeing are sort of the moderates who want a two-state solution. Well, they're more the moderate. They're not, the they're not still, very moderate, but the they're more moderate. The Israelis are still expanding settlements. And people need to understand what expanding settlements mean. So it's international law and really the most basic international law, this is what we critique Russia for, where you can't occupy a territory and then move your people in. And what Israel has been doing... Look, the past Israel has proved years, in the past they're prepared to knock down those settlements if there is a peace process. And I am sure that with a... Do you think Netanyahu did that? Do you think that was the policy of Netanyahu or Bezalel Smotrich or Itmar ben Gavir? No, right? Saying Israel is some kind of catch-all every single train of thought within Israeli politics is just a nonsense way of being to brush away criticism of the current regime and of the ideology of like the Israeli far right right I, I, at this point I don't even think that like the moderates like uh, Yair Lapid for example or Benny Gantz would demolish any of the settlements right if all he's referring to is the settlements being demolished in the Gaza Strip, right, Ariel Sharon's unilateral disengagement process. There are arguments that people say that the only reason they essentially did that was because they could have free reign to actually bomb Gaza later on. Like, I don't know whether those claims are true, but the idea of the, the, the unilateral disengagement consisted of anything other than just pulling out of the Gaza Strip when they, they very rarely ever, if ever, get rid of any settlements or even outposts in the West Bank, right? Settlements outposts have continued to expand, right? The settlements expanded at the express permission of the Israeli government. The outposts are, are illegal, even under Israeli law. The outposts are illegal, and yet the Netanyahu government completely turns a blind eye. I wonder why. I wonder why they do that. Even during the peace process, even during the peace process, right? Outside of like the Taba summit, for example, they still wanted to keep a bunch of settlements like Mali Adumim and uh, Gush Etzion in the West Bank. So this idea that Israel isn't like attached to their settlements using just the the 2005 disengagement process is your singular piece of evidence for, oh, well, they're happy to demolish, demolish settlements, even though they continually build them for decades in the West Bank. It's just like inhuman levels of disingenuousness and obfuscation. The two-state solution, probably nearer today than we think is possible. They will do that again. They've done it before, and they will do it again. They are desperate for peace. Why should the Jews not be allowed to be in the Middle East? That's what Hamas are doing. So and that's what the enemies, the enemies of Jewry generally in the world are saying. We would like to see you driven out. We and the problem is, right, is you can make those criticisms of like Hamas's leadership and their ideology, right? That's fair. They do want to kick Jews out of the Middle East. That's not an incorrect statement with regards to Hamas's ideology. But that doesn't encompass the entirety of the Palestinian movement. In fact, a very small minority, because it's just in the Gaza Strip, and the very few, <laughs> half of them are children, so aren't even included in that level of support either. And 70% of people in the Gaza Strip, when polled, want to have the Palestinian Authority back in charge in Gaza. And when Hamas and PIJ are like the only groups out of the entirety of the kind of Palestinian uh, like political class who actually do want to see that, yet all of the other ones, all of the, the, the Liberation Fronts and Fatah and the PPP, right? All of these ones, they want to see a like they want to see a single secular state outside of Fatah who want a two-state solution. We would like to see Jews driven out of the Middle East, right, in order to satisfy some, some terrorist outfit who are prepared to do the most shocking things. It is a most upsetting argument, yours, Michael, honestly upsetting. The I'm idea of accusing, to... accusing um, Israel of being terrorist is a shocker. An but it's just, it's just what they are. Like, we've, we've read the definition. They engage in instigatory violence for political ends. What would that be other than terrorism?
That's by the de- we've we've read the definition, Kelvin. He's a, he sounds like he's about to start crying. I mean, when you've been propagandized to about what Palestinians themselves believe, not necessarily like the political organizations, even though there is a lot of different viewpoints depending on which political organization that you ask. But when you've been propagandized to that the entirety of the Palestinian population just want to wipe out Jews in the way that he claims when they obviously don't, right? Then you're going to be, you, you will get into this position where you think, well, anybody supports the Palestinians in this way. Anyone who ac- actively, ac- um, who um, accurately categorizes the Israeli government as engaging in terrorism, then you're going to have that kind of reaction, aren't you? Because every part of like the kind of rationale that you've put yourself in only gets you to the point of the person that I'm conversing with is the enemy of all Jewish people, right? Is not just anti-Semitic in passing, but is so deeply anti-Semitic that they're willing to support people who want to wipe out all Jewish people, right? Equivalent to people who support the Nazis. That's how far this level of kind of ideological conditioning goes, where you don't even listen to your other person's arguments. You just see them on the other side of the argument and you instantly slur them, right? You instantly paint them as believing in the most like horrific shit possible. Because otherwise, all the things that you personally believe just don't make sense. Everything that you want to believe wouldn't otherwise make sense without that. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for memberships. It's just 99p, so be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron, and there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.